final matchup of the evening here on official EGF5. And what better way to do it than with University of Idaho going up against DePaul University. My name is Sam Talks. Joining me is the ever amazing Loki. And Loki, I mean, these two teams, I think we might be in for an interesting matchup here. Yeah, it should be um, pretty moving, I guess I would say how it is. Um, DePaul University has been doing pretty well so, so far this year. They have dropped two matches, and one of those was a forfeit. On the other hand, Idaho, a little bit looking to make their first mark. We've seen signs of success for them throughout the entire year. Um, their math differential, for example, is only minus 10, but they haven't been able to turn those close games and that execution into a real like spotlight win as of yet. We're going to see if it's going to be possible to do that here against DePaul University, which, like you said, have been doing a pretty good job so far, at the very least, from what we've seen in the standings. So let's go ahead and take a look at the standings real quick if we have that available, which I do believe we have. Yeah, production always coming in clutch. Let's take a look here, and you can see DePaul sitting at that nice number three spot, a very comfortable place to be gaming. Yeah. Again, in one of those losses is that forfeit. So the only real one actually played the Valorant game and got beat in counter. Apart from that, they've been doing extraordinarily well throughout the year. They don't have a ton of issue uh, with the map differential being huge. That map differential is sitting at nine positive right now. Rounds at 61 over eight games. So they've kind of set themselves up as a team to beat at the moment. This is going to be a tall order, I think, for any team. University of Idaho is really going to have to well, bring out all of the stomps if they're going to be expecting to take on a team like DePaul, who really, from what we're looking at so far, we, we've seen UTA play, and we know what, just what William & Mary is made of as well. University of Idaho is kind of staring at one of the Titans. So let's go ahead and take a look at the maps that we are going to be going to. And boy, howdy, Loki, this is a map selection if I've ever seen one. Yeah, um, Ascent coming up first. That's pretty, you know, standard Valorant esports. No surprises there. And then Split and Lotus as the decider. Suppose no one wants to play Fracture or Pearl. Would rather, would, ra would rather take their chances on the new map than have to play on either of those. Split coming back is very interesting, though. It has a totally different way of playing than any other map. Indeed it does, and that is the pick of University of Idaho. So assumptions there have to be made that they feel the most comfortable on that map. DePaul University, however, choosing the Ascent and the final decider for them was also going to be Lotus. So if DePaul thinks that Lotus, if they're going to have to go there, may as well cause all of the chaos in the world and really, I guess, maybe throw both of these teams for a loop because I got to be real with you here. Loki, this is a Lotus. I don't, I don't really see these teams having had that much practice on it yet. No, absolutely not. Um, it's been it's been interesting to try and figure out. I don't feel like anyone has a whole lot of experience at the moment. And with how fast paced of a map it is, I really don't know how you would have enough time to practice that macro up until now. Yeah, the really the kind of way that you play out on Lotus, right, is just press W and hope for the best if you're the attacking <laughs> team. Uh, at least that's how my ranked games go anyways. Still, Ascent is our first map of the evening, so we got to talk about that. Seeing uh, for University of Idaho, the compositions that they're deciding to want to roll with here. I mean, double sofa, right? Oh, yeah. No limits yeah. is off, so yeah, go ahead. And yeah, no limits. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like Omen's going to get picked first. I don't think picked first from both squads. I don't think that's a surprise there with how fast paced and aggressive Omen can be. In fact, you really only need those two smokes on Ascent. Idaho going to lock in that Reyna, wants to maybe go for those, you know, huge carry plays. Meanwhile, Kaz is on the jet, and I'm not going to say anyone is very surprised by that. I mean, really, can you be? Uh, it, it, it's Kaz. So <laughs> at this point, you're just looking at the Grim Reaper who's going to be posting up in mid, especially with them starting as defenders. Oh, yeah. Uh, better watch your heads. Better watch your chest because they're about to be blasted off by an operator. That's all I'm saying. Well, not just in mid. Kaz, Kaz likes to take that operator on a bit of a world tour. It's got to it's gotta show off the many sights of Ascent. 
And as of from what we've seen, Kaz is pretty competent no matter where they stock up with their operator. No matter how long or short the angle, all they need is a little peek and life gets very bad very quickly for whoever tries to contest them. Well, let's just say that life is not going to last for very long. <laughs> it's a uh, very rough time. As you can see, uh, some of the weapon choices that are being made here. Kaz is going to pick up the ghost. Ghosty, uh, funnily enough, decided to go with their namesake as well. Not very unusual with some of the choices that we have so far, but uh, yeah, I mean, pistol rounds are pistol rounds. And that's what makes them so much fun. Yeah, they're just so completely different than the rest of the game. Like, pistol round is just... I, I feel like it's a little own section of Valorant, you know? Oh, yeah. Especially with how people treat it. Like, we just roped off pistol rounds, and it's like, no, no, no. Only, you know, no one goes there unless they absolutely have to. Um, starting off, it does look like most of the, of both teams opting for that ghost. And Kaz already dodging through this garage, but with the suppression, there's no chance they can get out using their dash, so they're just going to leave that one real quick and let it get smoked. Yeah, the smokes go down and that completely stops Idaho. Jelly wanted to get out of mid, but Razor is going to slice them up right there. And DePaul University actually on the back foot right now, down a member and damage two on top of that. Sago not able to land the shots and Razor is still coming up clean. They've gotten two kills so far as we're making our approach through market things, evening back out, but immediately being traded. Razor kind of stepping up strong here and getting four kills in the first round, Loki. Good lord, Razor. University of Idaho coming out strong and absolutely shutting down DePaul. No one on DePaul able to get more than one kill, and this is a team that usually thrives on those multi-kills. Meanwhile, Idaho able to just take that aggression and completely change the pace here over on this B site. Out. Got a marshal from CS Sticks? Buying up the Spectres. We got a Stinger on the field as well. Full shields. University of Idaho feeling very cheeky coming off of that first round win. We continue our push. This time around, though, rather than going up main, it's time to make our mid push. You're going to be blinded. And Sago is going to get one headshot there. But Zesty is that going to make sure they trade that out. Ghosty very low on health. So Zesty is able to pick up a second one. Now it's time to turn our attention back over towards the mid. But make sure you're keeping an eye on Kaz who's walking their way through market. Otherwise, you could be in for a world of hurt. They're able to pick up another one. But Zesty finds their third kill. Gets the overhealing. And all that's left now is Suki with 56 HP to their name. Yeah, but talk about the damage they've done to Idaho here. The whole point of this round, you expect to win it. What says how good or not it is, is how many people Ooh. you keep alive through it. Suki almost grabbing that one there, but just can't quite find the flick before Scythe shuts him down. And Idaho losing three is not the place you want to be in. It looks like a couple of them are just going to buy up to that rifle as a result. But the entire team isn't going to be able to come with. No, no, they're not. And so right now you're going to have to figure out what do you really want to do as Idaho with that economy. Razor wants to be at the forefront of that, spending every single last penny that they have and being able to purchase that rifle along with heavy shields to Paul University. Let's take a look at what they're buying. Rifles? Not able to make the full buy though to the full shields. No, they're leaving behind the initiator and the, and the smokes, which if there's two people to leave behind, initiator smokes is generally, you know, two people that you would prefer to have half shields on. You want your duelist actually having some barrier when they're strolling down mid and killing cheese and setting up this very smooth pincher. Kaz just has to clear that, you know, little tiles where they can continue to try to push it up. Sticks, maybe looking for something. No, I'm just gonna have a smoke off from Ghosty and now Kaz is in a very aggressive position by themselves. Doesn't matter, oh, still finds the kill. Down, mid. Razor just wasn't ready for their TP'd up on top of the crates. Thought they were going to get the drop on to go see if they were trying to go through the smokes. Instead, Kaz was able to make the swing, who was hiding out in mid. None the wiser. Kaz gets three now, seeing just the tip of Zesty's head. One was able to remaining. blast it right the heck off. Now the only remaining member, CS Sticks, all by themselves. And what the heck is that crosshair, Loki? That is gigantic. <laughs> that Apparently, burst. it's good enough to take down, uh, take down Kaz. Flashback. Well, hey, when it's, when it's, it that, 30 seconds when it's left. that big, you can really just, you know, wave it and hope that some part hits and take it all the way home. 
Ooh, this is not good. Yeah, ZS6. They weren't going to survive there. It was going to be really difficult for them because they were being flanked by Suki. So, yeah, that was putting the guns into DePaul University's hands, and we're seeing exactly what happens when they get a little bit of a uh, little bit of firepower. Yeah. Um, sadly for Idaho, they're not able to really return that firepower since a couple of them, you know, tried to buy up after dying. You can see the result of it on Razor's buy at the moment. They're bringing a frenzy to the fight. Meanwhile, everyone on DePaul has that rifle in their hand. Some not able to buy that full shield it's due to the deaths they've accumulated. You know, you've got to keep something out back. There's not really any economy built up for DePaul at the moment. Kaz would not get targeted by that recon dart, but still is going to take some huge damage before they dash right back out and hand off the to their dead. friend. As Suki takes a huge angle Kaz? and Kaz pops right back out. Suki's got the pinch now continuing it. Can they find that attack oh, on main? Oh, yes, they can. Suki with the 3k, Kaz with the 2. And that is almost a flawless for what DePaul. What do you say, drone? Sheesh. What a round. All right, DePaul. That was... Uh, Explosive one to say the least, and Kaz getting a double kill when they were so dangerously low on health just goes to show you what this jet is capable of. But of course, we can't leave out Suki either, who was hanging out in mid and was getting perfection on their flanks. Yeah, we've seen you know, we've seen that hammer in Anvil before, and we're gonna see it all match today of Suki Cover going out. and their Sova just rolling through this team well, or suki okay. and uh kaz jelly so very good he got one early it's a 3v5 but jelly finds another one up top through that smoke are they gonna drop down razor thinking about it yeah kaz comes right up to him to make the decision the razor takes them right back down and just like that the swing comes from the other end and they are gone jelly picks if up you're three. not a good shot today don't worry there are other ways to be used the flanks are really really hurting idaho right now <laughs> It's not good. No, I mean, DePaul is doing a great job of just collapsing in, you know, the moment they smell blood like sharks. And Kaz has the up in their hand. And they are right. ready to swing this. They have the op. Things are going sideways. They have knives. So many options available to DePaul University in the ultimate department as well. This is going to be University of Idaho taking the full five stack. Let's go. Let's push. Let's make this work. But it's going to be interesting from Idaho as now they've popped the null command. Oh, that's not the kind of flash game you want, I don't think. That, that's, that's a little rough, but, you know, it happens to the best of us. We're going to go on to side. The only one on their saga, but you got to make sure you're watching out for this insane cast who has an operator ready to blast you away to infinity. And now Suki inside of a Hunter's Fury gets a kill inside of that. The operator is taken off the Shock field, start. but Idaho still has been able to play it. Saga is still alive somehow. Ooh, and right remaining. as I say that, Shock Dart comes through. And he's to get the plant because they're going to get past Jelly. Wow. But Zesty stays calm under that pressure. Takes him out, and Idaho evens us back up to three going into round seven. So, uh, seems like that full five stack push going in through B actually worked out really well here for Idaho. Instead of wanting to split off and instead of taking your time, you just go in as quick as you can. Maybe, maybe you also had a little bit of work, just pure mechanical skills coming into play too, being able to land some sick headshots, especially on the side of Zesty. Yeah, Zesty there, I think, did a great job with that, with that movement and understanding their positioning, you know, where to take fights based on the armament of the other team. Especially when they ran it directly at Kaz and just forced, you know, in order to get the kill, they would have had to, had to do a huge flick. And that was not gonna happen that you quickly. Run. Ghosty here. In this kill, Joe, I get a flash out with the pop flash looking for something. Oh Catches four with the flash, but not gonna get a kill. Sago manages to trade it back out, but they're in the middle of this kill, Joy. Life is not looking yeah. nice for them. No, it's not. They get detained, and Scythe is going to indeed use their namesake and reap them away. Three members left for DePaul University to try and get on site. It's going to be that much more difficult. Kaz does have the operator in hand. Okay, Jelly, you just going to walk on and kill Scythe. Thankfully, those SDs there ready to trade it. Excuse me? Was that a... Excuse me? 
What? There, there's oh. the, just read the room so well. Now Kaz has the knives, gets the Woo. kills, closes out that round. Uh, okay, Kaz, wallbang operator shot. Okay, knew exactly where they were. Talk about carving through the team. Good lord, one shot through the wall, takes that one down, and then brings the knives out. Finds two with them. It's exactly how you know you want to see your jet aggress. Even when they have the operator, they got to still find those entries. And Kaz absolutely doing their job. And with that, Idaho back on the save. Looks like they're going to disperse about it or maybe lean towards A. It seems like an A approach this time around. You're going to have to be very careful if you're going to make that decision because Kaz has posted themselves up in heaven. So whatever decision you make, it's going to have to be decisive. You can't waste any time not with Kaz on the defense. Yes, they have that shot on A. Idaho starts to drift over that way. Suki contesting mid. Scythe up there with a marshal, and the recon dart goes out. But Idaho is just really debating where they want to go. Kaz... See who's gonna peek first who's gonna take this angle first it's zesty and the shot goes between their legs that's the kind of things that are gonna keep you up at night when you think about that now kaz ready for another shot unfortunately your kj is stuck on the other side cheese in a very unenviable position right now if they want to get across, they're going to have to do it now. They're going to have to be quicker. They're going to have to be fast on their feet. Otherwise, they're going to be blasted away to eternity or wait for your reinforcements. The knives do go out, but Cheese is not going to get caught inside of that. Cover going now, Razor D use the smokes to make sure that they're safe. Going inside of Market picks up the Phantom. Now it's time to rotate over, whether it's going towards B or towards A. Spike down mid. Cheese in their attempt to get out. They're not getting out. <laughs> Get this though, up in tower. Has got the, they've got the Ten seconds left. Idaho what? on notice. They just know this brain is gigantic. Disgusting, truly disgusting. Just, Kaz, it, you, you, it's, it's gigantic. Kaz has the reads on exactly what Idaho wants to do, where they want to go, how they want to go about Kaz doing it. Robot. And you just got to say time and time again that this player is unbelievable now we see kaz spinning up some of their massive amounts of credits to give suki the odin thankfully though for idaho they're still able to make those purchases but money's running out yeah idaho does have their full buy back on the table and as DePaul invests a lot of money on b site they're all over on a and no one's actually watching this choke right now yeah, A main is just free real estate. Okay, there's all of the information that you need. You know that at the very least two are going up, maybe three, I didn't see how many got caught inside of that, but still the smokes and the grid and the molly is going to be good enough to make Idaho think twice about wanting to engage in on that side. And as they make their rotation, if they decide to go towards B, Kaz, that's it. That's all you have to say, Loki, that's it. Yeah, meanwhile, all of the util in mid and B make sure that if they try to, you know, run up mid, DePaul's going to get alerted. Idaho now stacked on Cat, looking to come Treehouse. There's two watching that angle. And Omen tucked right in the doorway, ready to spin around. So the tip's go. so going to find one, going to find two, looking for more. You're not going to find the running gun as Jelly shuts down a main. Jelly knows they're right there. Can either shut the door or take the fight to him. Oh, wants to take the Thinking fight. About it. Thinking about it. Blind and dead. And that leaves one into the shadows all the way over to B. I don't know that that's going to be uh, too much of a detriment, if you will. Got to attempt something. At the very least, you plant down the spike. It's spike credit bonus, so that's going to have to go into the next round. It was all over though, the second Kaz made that peek with an operator. It's just, what are you gonna do against this madman? Not, not a ton at the moment. Usually the best way to deal with it is either one, play your angles really well, play your smokes really well, or just be better at the operator. Issue is, Kaz is willing to play this operator like it's a vandal. 
and take angles that are so <laughs> aggressive um and just you know have no fear and their mechanics usually back up those angles they don't get punished for them a whole lot and so they're able to just walk into sight lines with the operator out and take snapshots like that it's a, it's a fearless it's a fearless Kaz. it's a, it's a it's a jet it's a player who knows exactly what they're doing and how they want to go about on a scent time and time and time and time and time and time and time again and continuously coming up victorious every single time and that recon dark just got all of the information in the world and then some mid is going to be the hot spot for university of idaho but DePaul university is electing to give it up really sago is the only one who's gonna try and hold it in market they did get hit with a paranoia a lot of damage given to them as well but you always got to make sure to be careful with your flanks because now kaz is in mid watching down from there zessi does get one kill tries to heal themselves back up the only thing they're gonna be healing is nothing they're dead razor is gonna make the swing sago's not gonna be able to survive that but Kaz the actually shorty. a shorty, a shorty, a shorty of all things. No health on the board at the moment though. Last player one standing. sticks gonna catch the leg through the wall. Flash swings Ooh. on him, barely expecting to cover. Takes the fight and sticks okay, shuts him down. Three Ks for the KO and that's a round win. Ooh, okay, sticks. Not in the best position in the world. They also, well, look at this. Look at this fancy little gadget that they have in their hand. This fancy big gun that they've <laughs> given over to Scythe, an operator. But Kaz, of course, not. They're, they're gonna have a little bit of a duel. We can have an op duel now. Yeah, but no one else on the team really gonna have much firepower in their hands. Idaho lost too many members on that last round. And so we're bringing specters and sheriffs. To the battle slice control this mid but Kaz oh, is no in way. B short and taking shots zesty put down don't do Killjoy it gonna be next please don't do it Killjoy gonna be next peek the shoulder but she's managed to get out just in time cheese don't do it just whatever you do please okay flashbang comes out but she able to just walk over and once Kaz walks right back out razor Immediately lopped and put into the ground. You can't do anything. You really can't. There's nothing you can do. I. Last round. So here's the thing. If you're gonna go up against an op angle like that, you can't hesitate. You can't. No, you can't. Like you, you throw out the smokes. You throw out, you know, your flashes, and you have to rush on sight. Because at that point, even if they kill one, they can't repeak the rest. You know. They. they you want to get the trade? Yeah, exactly. It has to reload. They're useless for the next, like, second or two. I think it's like a second and a half uh, reload or something on that. And so if you get on site fast enough, at the very least, you can trade it out. And, you know, then you've dealt with the operator when they're taking that aggressive angle. And then you punish that type of stuff. All right. Look at this. DePaul University knows exactly where Idaho is going. It's an A push. They're taking. Scythe took some damage for their efforts. A couple of shock darts go in. A little bit of damage here and there. All right, we're just we're just slowed down. Idaho. It's 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 not the worst position, but yeah. well, it's not there great it is. either. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not great. That's, <laughs> that that's definitely not great. The issue is, I mean, they just don't have anyone covering anywhere, and they're not playing it aggressively, so they just basically just put themselves what in a that barrel. Is, that's disgusting. Just for exactly that that's play. That's disgusting. Jelly! Oh well, that's a shame for Suki. Oh no, that was round. That was round twelve. My <laughs> that was, yeah, that was yeah, that was it. Side. That's that's Might the half. Well pop it. All right, yeah, yeah DePaul, uh, getting through that half pretty quickly on time. Um, and with eight rounds to their name, so not even a nine and three curse on the board for Idaho. They're just gonna have to play it straight. Ascent is an attacking side map as well, and so you you start to wonder, you know, is there a cool defense strat that they can pull out? Uh, it's gonna have to be ice cool. It's gonna have to be. It, it, it's gonna have to be cool, all capital letters, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe some glitter on it. <laughs> um, otherwise, DePaul University is going to roll right in there. This is, by the way, 
a typical maneuver we see from teams that are highly confident in their abilities. Kaz to execute immediately on the site, throws down the smoke, dashes onto there, creates all of that lovely space. They're gonna have to catch Scythe out. Well, they don't actually have to catch Scythe out because Ghosty is gonna catch them out instead with a nice clean headshot using that ghost. Spike oh planted. my gosh. What is gonna happen here from Jelly? Wait a minute though. 2v3, this one yeah. Over. Idaho's even Spike... right back out. Yeah, Spike has planted too. Yeah. Last Six, trying standing. to find something. Not gonna find it. Suki able to put him down. Now it's just all up to Razor. Dab on the Penguin. Give yourself that confidence and go get him. Little Omen. <laughs> well, maybe needed uh, some more time with the Penguin. Yeah. Um, I think what, what, what might have helped there was Six was trying to take on that 1v3 by themselves where Razor could have possibly given them some support with where they were as well, uh, rather than doing it alone, doing it solo. I think maybe some coordination there would have been the ideal play. It, it seems like Idaho's a bit scared to really like stack on each other and commit more than one person to a play at a time. Uh, meanwhile, DePaul is just swarming. I mean, we've seen that hammer and anvil between Suki and Kaz. We've seen Jelly doing the great follow-up, setting up their friends. It seems like every play from DePaul is set up by someone else to make it happen. Idaho, yep. though, just really going for a lot of these solo plays. Jelly, again, is left on this angle to fight Styx. This is the first Marshall shot, and so Styx, rather than wanting to engage on that, is just gonna back away. That's really all they want to do. Same for Cheese. They've lost one member already goes down, and so now it's time to get out of there. The swarm grenade goes one down. They know exactly remaining. where Cheese is. Kaz wanted to do something there, but Sago is more than ready to take down everyone who was on B site themselves. Now all alone, Styx, classic to their name, no utility except for their knife. And a hope and a dream. You throw it out. But flanked by Ghosty. That's it. All right, DePaul University, now in the double digits. It's amazing how quickly those dreams become nightmares, especially when you have a solid flank like that through heaven and a flawless conversion round. Really sets them up for this bonus. Two rifles on the board, Ghosty and Kaz both with one. And so if they get a kill or two, the weapon advantage is off the table, really. Meanwhile, Suki has been consistently good with like Odin and Ares and those types of fast firing heavy weapons that they have and it's kind of the thing that you want you somebody to be good on in ascent it's kind of their like bread and butter right being able to shoot through the walls being able to attack from there it's gonna be another a b site execution sorry four going in through main one hanging out in mid now it seems like uh, yeah, okay ghost he's just having fun there he's, he's 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 going back and forth maybe waiting for someone to walk maybe for someone to be aggressive the opening is there with kill on to sticks uh, <laughs> taking the, taking a little bit of damage on the turn but that's all right not too much damage at the end of the day and kaz is popping heads left and right two kills already for this insane player as they're able to execute on the site cheese gets one immediately traded out by ghosty suki has nine hp to their name he's gonna walk up towards market making sure that anyone who comes through that door is gonna have to really watch out for them razor but now the smoke seeing out the paranoia but the recon dart is gonna give out all of the information that is needed Scythe can walk in gets a kill for themselves and now it's the 1v1 loki razor v sago and sago stands tall gets the kill and the round you love it when your sentinel is calm under that pressure and willing to just sit in the back by their time. They know they're the last line of defense and have to play it clean. Sago does an amazing job of playing that role right there. And look at this. Every single person on DePaul is even. Not a single one getting left behind. Everyone contributing so, so much. And more than that, Suki has an Odin. <laughs> Suki has an Odin. By the way, Gosi with 13 assists. Phew. That is an initiator who's re who wants to help their team out and now using the null command to give them entry onto B-Site, which is really pivotal too, because Cheese is hiding out on there. You take away the power of that Killjoy. No turret, no swarm grenade, nothing really for them to worry about. And as Razor is hiding out inside a boathouse, that is also going to be their grave on top of that six try and go for the flank. It's going to be a little difficult with a marshal. They have a frenzy in the back pocket that they can use. But there's openings. Cheese takes out Kaz. Answer might not be as bad as it. Okay. 
Well, that's, that's where things get bad. Yeah, Suki's got the angle on the Odin. Wait a minute. One more coming Wait around. Do they know? They do not know. Standing. And Sticks finds it. They're the last player standing. If they can get to that Odin, that might be a lifeline. They've got the Vandal in their hands, actually. Knife out. Looking for Ghosty. Not going to happen. Ghosty asserts dominance on the KO and where it matched points, ladies, gentlemen, and then everyone in match between. Point. All University. Looking really good with their money. Looking really good with the purchases that they can make right now. University of Idaho. Not the not the economy you want going into the final with the match point. No. Um gonna have one rifle on the table. Everyone else opting for shotguns, and as a result, we see them stacked here on B. You, if they want to win this, they have to take it aggressive and run it straight at Paul. Getting it cast down. HP. Sticks on one HP. Chat. Cheese picks up another. More jelly. Gonna shut down Sticks and Cheese. That evens it back out at three. Idaho's gotta keep this momentum up. Razor tries to take it right to him as Scythe shuts one down. Suki spraying and praying, but Scythe has a. I don't remember the name of that gun off the top of my head for some reason. I've completely forgotten names. But uh, Idaho manages to take it through. Not the Idaho, the uh, Mark, they're not the sheriff. The, the big sheriff, the rifle sheriff. Uh, the guardian? Guardian, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing job. Glad, with we the guardian. To, glad we were able to. We, we got this. We, we, can, we can figure these things out. Listen, nobody I mean, ever uses a guardian, right? So it's hard to remember. You gotta use it for the aim training. It, the it's, it's a it's a sheriff with better fire rate. So, you know, you gotta take it into deathmatch and really work on hitting those headshots. Thanks. Oh, I'm just a stinky vandal user the entire time. Standing ahead. That's, that's, how I, that's how I live my life in there anyways. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> the Ball University definitely not expecting that to happen on their match point. Wasn't expecting the entire B stack, the B defense, everyone on there. Making sure that it's safe. And now in a, a little bit of a rare form for DePaul, it's time to jump ship and make our way over towards A. But there's no ship that's gonna be jumped over. It's Zesty who's gonna be the bulwark and the defending for this team. Idaho's lifeline is still working for them. And a flawless round is the ego mental boost that you need. Yeah, Jelly hits the formality check, but you can't have those checks be formalities. You gotta go all the way through. And that sets up Zesty in an amazing spot to just control that entire round. Good pinch comes through and Idaho continues to live. They're actually gonna find their first conversion round of the entire game. It's not a true conversion. Uh, most of DePaul still would have buy up, but it's more of a conversion than we've seen for them yet. Indeed so, DePaul University a little bit light on those buys. And so now it's gonna be another A side push immediately get onto their Razor hit with the suppression and also blinded at the same time. And if Kaz is trying to make their way with the smokes, Razor knows exactly where they're going. Jelly into the shadows, into getting a double kill. Beautifully well done. A uh, little, little sprain on their ankles. She's hit with a paranoia, recognizes that, and backs the heck out of there. Jelly now with a 3K, looking for their fourth one, is not able to get it, and Cheese gets a double for their efforts. And on top of that, still has the lockdown to give themselves a little bit of breathing room. Oh? Um, bomb is planted, and it's planted aggressively as well. So Idaho's gonna have to fight through with Sago and Suki. She's at half health as they did take a hit from the Alphaberry. Tap on the bomb. She's letting them. She's trying to Jeez. cover while their team defuses. Not gonna happen. Swing now onto the bomb just in time. And Suki closes it out. DePaul takes a set 13 to 6. That is a. I mean, listen, that's a pretty decent score line for University of Idaho going up against a team like DePaul University. I think there were moments where DePaul was kind of a little shaken by what Idaho was putting out there. And I, it, it, here's the thing for what we're seeing from Idaho, I think is maybe a little bit more coordination is needed. Once they, you can see when they do have that coordination, how well this team really works and how well they're able to pull out some plays that technically really we weren't expecting to work out very well for them. 
but then you have moments, especially we can see it there on the final round, Cheese uh, overheating a little bit, wanting to aggress so far in there rather than letting DePaul come to them. And so you put yourself in these awkward angles, these awkward situations where you're not able to work with your teammate as effectively, and then it just kind of peters out from there. Yeah, I mean, you you really need to set up these macro plays. Idaho definitely has great mechanical skill. They have great movement. They have everything they need other than a friend to help them out. With that, though, we're going to go to a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple minutes for map two. <laughs> DePaul University feeling a little frisky now that they've managed to get one win above University of Idaho here. But now we go into our second map, a returning favorite of Split. And this is where we're gonna hopefully going to see from University of Idaho that uh, maybe maybe they've been able to find warmed up now. They're going to onto their map pick and they're feeling a little bit more confident. Yeah um split especially being a new map back into the rotation um it, it might be able to just kind of even out that macro advantage that the paul brought back into play um you know make it more about those mechanics no one really has good developed new you know strats for the current meta it's really really recent to how everything is going so you know Maybe, maybe you rely more on that micro. Maybe you rely more on those personal plays. And University of Idaho was significantly more confident there. DePaul, however, seems very confident in their agent picks. Jelly and Ghosty already locked in. This probably means we'll see the controller cats. We've seen them on Viper before. We have. But will they do it? That's the real question. Oh. Oh, Kaz. Not Sentinel Kaz this time. A Cypher. I like it, though. I really do. Cypher I... on Split is, is is always an excellent choice. I love I love this agent on Split. Yeah. it. I think he does such a good job of locking down these more closed-off sites, you know? Especially playing with the intel, where all you need on a map like Split is just kind of a notion of where someone is, and you can swing on them so easily. Byford does a great job of exactly that. Suki going to opt for the Sky, which I think actually this is one of the first times we've seen them on Choose anything your other agent. than a Indeed so. Still sticking with that initiator role, but the Sky this time around, the choices there for Idaho have now been locked in. A lot of similarities here. The differences being our duelists and our initiators. And it looks like Idaho still going to be leaning on that Reyna pick. Breach, I think, very strong on split with all of the, you know, again, small corridors, small areas, places they can just lock down. And then Sage is always a good pick. Sage, Sage just has that information gathering that is, I think, really important here on split. I guess we just had. <laughs> What are we doing here? Names are what, who am I even? Uh, Sage. We, we love Sage. Able to wall off and mid. Able to keep things covered. But, uh, yes, Sky. Dogs. Dogs. Able to gather all that information. Maybe not quite as, uh, has the stall potential that Cheese is able to bring to the table with Breed. Uh, but they're still very, I mean, flash things. We can never discount those from both of these initiators. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm very interested to see which one's going to come out on top. Yeah, I I actually think Breach is is more suited 
to split with their uh, concusses and how good their flashes are popping through walls. And split is basically a maze. Um, up first, though, Idaho is going to be on this attack. Speaking of basically a maze, they're working their way through garage, and she is just setting up for a pretty classic breeze concussion. Meanwhile, Scythe trying to find their friends through mid. Stars are out. Swing coming in. They're swinging on to Ghosty. Not going to work quite yet. They managed to just get back out where Paz shuts down that garage push immediately. And with a wall up in mid, no one's coming through that way. No, they are not. Immediately denied entry. And the slow two on top of that is going to make for a very dangerous attempt if you try to go through there. Meanwhile, Ghosty is still sitting on top of that wall site to be able to regroup with the rest of the team. Uh, the push from Idaho, though, pretty much stalled out. Okay, there we go. Now we're seeing some action happening here in mid. Now the wall comes up. Kaz is still going to be the defender to make sure that B site is safe. Remaining. And Sticks really had no idea what was going on. Trying to figure out where Kaz was coming from. Well, they found it out in the worst way possible. <laughs> take on Ghosty. Nope. Run and gun frenzy ends it right there. Part of the reason Frenzy is so good is that you can execute plays like that. And with only one loss on Pistol, DePaul starting off very clean. That will get them all the way up to bonus. Jelly opting to put a shotgun in their hands. And Idaho not willing to force up, and I can't blame them. No, I like this. I like this from them wanting to play it safe, play it safe with their economy, go into the next round. Um, if you don't win this one, right? with the guns that's really what we're looking for here from idaho good understanding of the economy now it's going to be a full a stack push where the split off is going to happen whether they go and take the high ground is going to be very pivotal now we have the bird flash to be able to gather the information a lot of members spotted out by suki you're gonna go on there you're gonna to have to be very very careful the fall flying comes through no one caught inside of that suki still safe still happy still alive one it is just remaining. the meat grinder that Idaho is walking into, quite literally. Now Zesty having a little dance all by themselves. DePaul does such a cool job of sharing information with their team and communicating that stuff. Because, I mean, like, they didn't have a good shot there from Kaz. Kaz didn't know where anyone was, but they did have their teammate calling out, Hey, there are people right here. Start shooting. They're in this area. You can get a kill through the smoke. And that's exactly what they did. And it came up with a kill and took pressure off of their teammate as well so that they could make a play. And with that, it just exactly, yeah, creates, you know, a little bit of a car wash of bullets and sends them on to the next round with a, with a nice win. Idaho is going to grab all the way up to rifles. One person going to end up with a guardian. But we've seen Let's how insane vision. Idaho can be with a guardian already. Indeed so. All right, Idaho is making their attempt up through mid. Jelly was caught inside of the concuss, but the teammate, the coordination, the saving grace for this team continues to come in time and time again. Jelly wanted to get the weapon. They were very hungry for it, but it turns out just a little trap as Scythe was hiding out inside of there. Thankfully, though, Suki continuously time and time again is able to trade it out here for their team. And now Sticks putting that guarding to very good use. It lands a very important wall bang headshot. Cheese go inside. Using the blind, remaining. and inside of that blind was Ghosty. Now Kaz by themselves, with only a Spectre to their name, it's going to be a very difficult 1v3. Yeah, but might as well take what they can get. Cheese is going to be the first opponent they have to deal with, but the death of Kaz, that's a 3k for Cheese, and not a terrible rifle round. Only losing two, that's about average. That's pretty good for them. The nice thing here for DePaul is that they can still make these big buys that we're seeing right now from them. They didn't lose. I don't think they lost anyone in that second round. And so that really sets their economy up really good here. So even if they did lose that one, even though they didn't get the bonus round, technically they still get all of that money in their pocket. Uh, Idaho still hurting a little bit from the two members that did fall, not able to make the fullest of buys, but not the worst situation to be in either. No, absolutely not. And the Paul does have that neural threat up, ready to go. And so one kill can turn in a whole lot of information, but not going to need a ton of information once a scan goes out and everyone realizes there's five members on A. You can see the Paul already taking a lot of space, kind of closing down options of where Idaho could be. Oh my wife. Smoke goes out, as well as a little bit of a cage trying to check people. 
has salt cheese. So looking for that next shot. The swing is out. Ooh, nice little counter strafe to find one. But the flank comes through from Razor, but quickly traded out means that we're gonna have a nice Jelly. pinch onto Idaho. Jelly coming in through sewer is supported by their Sage as well on top of that. Scythe is holding out on Scythe. The wall breaks, but Scythe none the wiser about the destruction that is coming their way. And Zesty is going to be feeling that one in the morning all by themselves. Sticks had the world on their shoulders, and it was heavy. Spike defused to Paul University. 3 1. Seems like so far on split, anytime DePaul has guns in their hands, Idaho is having a really hard time breaking through. Idaho hasn't really gone for any of those kind of personal plays yet, for those like micro style plays. We see them just stacking and trying to run on top of each other. I would love to see a more neutral from Idaho, honestly, and try to rely more on that YouTube battle, try to rely on more on that personal play rather than, you know, stacking and, send and sending it, especially with how good DePaul University's recoil control is as a team. They're doing a really good job of taking a 1v2 and not being at a huge disadvantage because they can, you know, oh spray transfer so well. Oh, 1v5. Saga, Saga? They the wall out and gets the orb. No way. What? They went up there. They put down the wall. They get away with picking up the ult orb. And now they're just one kill away from getting their revive up. Now it's just a spray and pray through the smoke to see if they can actually get that. Eh, it's time to just back up, though, and play it safe. Might be trying to rotate, but Jelly's in mid. Gonna take down Razor after taking some damage themselves, and now the crossfire is set up. 50-50 shot. S sticks. When are you gonna take? Sixes. Oh! Ooh. Nice little angle right there. Mind where Suki oh. has another kill. Has two Spike kills. Down, they trade it out. So a two for two trade in mid leaves DePaul one up in the bomb. A little bit me. trapped as Kaz sends Zesty right back to the underworld. Oh, just under cheese. All down to Cheese, throws up the flashbang, reveals that information. Now they know that, very least, Cheese is somewhere in this general vicinity, but Cheese has managed to sneak their way into CT. Perhaps to go up through left. tower. They do need to go all the way and pick up the spike, and that is going to be difficult for them to do that in the less than 30 seconds that they have available to them. Go see is going to hold this angle, and really, the only thing that DePaul University needs to do is just make sure that all of the angles and all of the corridors are covered. Even with the death of Cheese right there, you have Kaz, who's going to hold this angle, and Cheese, they tried. They really did, and it was a valiant effort. Paul University had a sixth player there, and that was Father Time. Um, you know, really forcing Cheese to kind of get in the gear and take fights they maybe weren't super willing to take. And we saw, you know, how cautious they wanted to be. When they played it slow, they set themselves up for a really nice kill. But at the end, but it takes four seconds to plant. Would have taken about six seconds to get back to site. So they needed the bomb immediately. And they just wasn't going to happen fast enough. With that, the ball up once again on a conversion round. And looking to just carry this momentum. And Kaz is all alone on A. Because really... They can be. They have all of the utility available to them as a cipher and so many ways to be able to hold this that point. They also have Cage the guns in their hands and they know that Idaho can't make the purchase that they want to. And so they're able to stay safe waiting for the rotation using that cage. Now it's time to walk forward. Scythe is stuck inside of there. They can't go anywhere. And the second that cage goes down, so will Scythe. Like that. And there's the narrow threat as well. Kaz almost getting taken down before it was finished but that reveals everyone and it reveals that hey it's time to run it and crazy it. hammer and anvil time and here comes the anvil slamming it right in but even the strongest player stand broken and uh, DePaul not able to close it out there as Zesty grabs himself a rifle as well as still having both flashes and a health recharge but not for long <sighs> turns out headshots are pretty powerful Loki they uh, hurt quite a lot. That is good enough to put down Zesty. DePaul University. It's, 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 you, you see it time and time again from Idaho that one member has to kind of carry the burden of being able to close out the round. And that's a lot to continue to ask of your team time and time again. And it's, it's just, DePaul University is playing it so cleanly. They're playing it so smartly. And they're not taking aggressive plays that they don't need to. 
Center that up now. Paul University with that nice spread. Suki and Ghosty covering Garage. Grenade out and blast pack to safety. As Zesty's. Oh, Showstopper! Goodbye, Zesty! No! Who lives on one okay, health, but not for long? As. There it is, Rolling Thunder to get the concussion, but Suki's up on an angle. Flash picks out. They're not checking the high. Finally, they do, but it took too long. And Ghosty gets a nice trade right back out. And they're still All right. stuck in this garage. Yeah, they can't go anywhere. At the very least, they get the res onto Zesty, but in their attempt to go up through the tower. Oh my god, Ghosty. 3k to their name. Sago is still hiding out up on the high ground. And there's the kills that are needed in order to win this round. DePaul University is just so spicy. The movement from all of DePaul is amazing. They are po constantly popping these counter strafes. And they are working so well. Most Valorant players aren't amazing at tracking. They really focus, you know, on those flick shots because that's what Valorant guns are. You know, you shoot for longer than three seconds, you're getting recall thrown so much that there's no need for real tracking with stuff, especially with how low the time to kill is. And so if you can hit those counter strafes, you throw your chance of living through the roof. Speaking of chance to live here, University of Idaho is looking for a chance to continue to live throughout the rest of this series. But Kaz, holding a different angle this time around, where they've been in tower so many times before, holding their they're holding their footing actually on the site. Spike Suki, a double a. kill. How do you let them get away with this? Picks up the Phantom, Long. converts that into a third one. While we, were, while we were messing around, Loki, Idaho's gone. Just gone. No. Yeah. Why, why, wiped off the map in a single painless snap, if you will. Um... And so DePaul now going to be on another conversion. Idaho looks like they might be getting frustrated with that position as Razor's maybe thinking about buying a Vandal, Zesty's hero buying. And that's when the wheels start to fall off the bus, in my opinion, is when teammates start buying on you different frequencies it. from the rest of their teammates. Okay, you just throw up the wall immediately. Slow them down. They've been... We've been seeing Idaho leaning towards this A-side push for a couple of rounds now. And DePaul University is really picking up on that. And as I tries to go through that wall, is immediately met by Sago. Uh, I gotta I gotta be real here. It seems like Idaho kind of in shambles, but they're able to get the trades. And really, kind of that's what matters here. And now they're in the numbers advantage. Yeah. And DePaul just uh, uh, lost in the sauce. Uh, Never mind, Kaz is right here to clean it up. Little did we know that those deaths were just resources being spent to prop open a Kaz double kill on ramps. And while Bomb is planted, Sticks not in the best post plant position. So don't really don't have any map control. Jelly Ooh, found them out. Good. They know where they are. Kaz looking for it. 3K for Kaz. Round win for DePaul. And that is eight rounds going into round 10. A little painful here, I think, for Idaho. It seemed like the idea that they wanted to have in their head was just throw bodies at it and let's see if we we're going to be able to get the trades that we need. Especially in that round where the wall came up. It was just walk through it and let's see what we can do here. <sighs> yeah, it's it's just DePaul University, especially Kaz, I think, there was the one who kind of saved the day big time. Getting the double kill and then closing it out with the uh, final elimination on to Sticks. The big thing, too, for Sticks is that it was going to be difficult no matter how they do it. It was a 2v1 situation. They did manage to plant the spike, but from that point on, it was just going to be... It was just going to be a lot of pain. It was it was going to be difficult no matter how you cut it. Ghost is going to throw out the pain shells, but the aftershock comes in. Deals a little bit of damage to them. Forces them back around. Sticks gets a double kill executing onto tower. And so now that is a very advantageous position. Now we're going to have the hero theft, the walls to prevent anyone from coming that direction. Now all by themselves is Sago all the way on A site. <laughs> oh, walled, walled, them too. <laughs> walled themselves off and forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> We see him rolling back up through sewers now. 1v5. I might say just keep the gun in your hands at that point. And Sticks? yeah, that would have been the better option. As Sticks finding the 3k. Who needs a duelist when you've got a sage? The battle sage, of course. The most dangerous creature in Valorant ethos. The Valorant lore. Doesn't come out very often, but when they do, 
Well, you better watch your heads, everyone. Six really putting on the mantle to take that back, especially after what happened in that previous round where they were the final survivor. Wanted to prove that they could still stand tall with the best of them. And I think they proved that with that one round. And so now we're looking towards our, well, 11th round, seeing who's going to be able to take this here. And it's going to be walking in through sewers rather than making an attempt going in through B main, throwing out the concussion. Right Zessi is going to jump on top there. Here comes the stars to be put down as well as paint shells once more a bird from suki to be able to flash in there and jelly as they make their swing is the wall bang headshot kill and it is nothing but headshots for depaul university suki is just such a good second option with all of these plays like anytime a play is getting made suki is so good at being the second option ready to cover and ready to help execute and anytime they do, we see them coming out with, you know, at least one or two kills. Now, Razor tries to stand against the horde. Not going to happen. Goes to take them down and looking for more. But Scythe says no. Can Scythe even back out? Yes, they can. There's Cats. Now they have the 1v2 if they take it right. And the dog that kill. will do that. The dog got that. the kill. Last round. That was really close there for Idaho, though. I was just... <laughs> we can see a chat. Dog OP. Dog is dangerous. Dog is deadly. Dog has the bite to go with that bark. All right. We're, we're getting very close here to the second half. Obviously, University of Idaho wants to try and get that 9-3 curse going. So we're going to be looking towards them to be able to make that happen. The full buy not possible for Idaho. We're seeing Scythe using a Guardian. But that Guardian has proven time and time again to be the cause of many a headache. Been, it's been brutal, honestly. I, I kind of like it better than the Vandal a lot of the time in Idaho's hands. Lots of resources getting thrown out. Empress as well, but that cage is going to stop it right in its tracks. Zesty also takes some damage due to that Sago spray. And that notice gives everyone from DePaul time to rotate over. And they're positioned pretty well to deal with it. Ghosty in heaven looking oh. for Zesty. Not going to find it. But... Still, this heaven is going to get collapsed on pretty quick. Suki finds Razor coming up from from, from ropes, but gets shut down as Sago is dead on sight. And now, Idaho in a much better spot. Jelly and Zesty having themselves a little bit of a fight. Trying to come up through ropes. No sight. Ran back around, and now it's just at the Kaz. Classic is out, and sight is going to be the anvil there. Taking that one out. Idaho. Ends Switching up sides. with this nine and three, nine and three curse, eyebrows, eyes, eyebrows, eyes, eyes, eyes. Now, what worked for Idaho in that round, Loki? Teamwork, big time. It, it makes was, the dream work. It really, really does. Zessi was holding out inside of tower, had the attention of Kaz and the attention of Jelly. But guess what? While both of these, while both of the members of DePaul University were trying to take them down, Zesty was like, come on, guys, come on, come on, come on, come on. We got this. If you if you go up on it, if you get the flank, you got this. We have the positions, we have the timings, let's go. And it worked out perfectly. Yeah. I mean, that's the, you know, that's that team play performance that we want to see is friends covering friends. You know, you, you do that aggressive play and you know that even if it doesn't work, your friend can follow up and make it work. Now, Styx has the wall down and only a classic in hand. So DePaul University playing a very slow, or as I was, Idaho playing a very, very slow game. In mid, trying to find the shot. Going to do a little bit of damage and the flash scares him off. But Cheese has the angle and helps their team take down two. They're getting chased back down on. The trade comes right back out. Jelly now on A site. No one's there. This split push completely opened up the site. Where is our plant friend, though? You got to get there. Get, get, there we go. Okay, Sago gets the spike planted. And the wall stops oh, no. Idaho in their tracks. Ghosty takes a little bit of damage. Gets the heck out of dodge before reasserting their dominance once more. Headshots come in. Ghosty gets the triple. The quad? No, it's just getting out of there. Play it safe. I like this, though, from DePaul. They know when to Saga. go. They know. But Saga. <gasps> Oh, zesty. Almost lost their head. 
but now they've been slowed. There's only one way that Zessy can go, and that's down in the ground. And that is six feet under. Brutal outcome. At that point, that that that's really coming so close, I'm just not quite able to complete it. The Paul, I believe, four for four now on these pistol rounds. And at this point, they're willing to, yeah, just take their guns and roll it. Idaho, not going to force up to them. Still can't blame them. If they did, it would, re and they, if they did force up and lost, it would be really interesting trying to get back on track before DePaul got the match point. Oh, the aggression! Ghosty takes down Scythe. Razor just trying to fight for their lives, but Jelly says no, uses the Guardian back on him. And Plants is going down in a very aggressive position. And map control already being taken for post plan. My gosh, DePaul University exploding onto that site. And Zessi had literally no health. That pain shell, the second it came out, is going to put standing. them away. Gosi is just walking, fearless. And Styx knows that if they take down that trip, that is going to give all the information to DePaul. And so now, they get caught inside of it. And a clean headshot from Jelly. 11 on the board, Idaho with rifles, DePaul still holding on to all of those bonus weapons. No one died, so no one has to buy up. That economy is looking very pretty. Idaho, though, not able to completely buy up across the board. Razor is going to get left behind. In this time, you know, when stuff's on the wire, you've got to look to, you know, the people on your team who have been consistently making a difference, who have, be, who have been those standout players, you gotta look to Zesty, you gotta look to Styx, and try to set them up to make the plays that they need to. Ooh, that jump gave Walt. Styx away. Indeed it did. Yup, that jump gave them away. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> Suki, Suki's the only one who can't get over. Oh my word. It's a little moments like this in Valorant that you live for. Okay, all right, it's Zesty on site. It, it, it's Zesty was on site. Okay, all right, well, you got one person left alive on Idaho. It's Razor. They got a Spectre. It's gonna, ooh, okay, at the very least you get Kaz. Now we're on to match point. And let's see what happens here. Match so point. Free Vantum in their hands as well. Idaho, no money on the table. Meanwhile, everyone from DePaul is uh, money, 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 money in the chat. 4,000. Yeah, they, they got a range right now of 1,600 to 6,950 on <laughs> round four of attack. Good lord. Good lord indeed. All right. DePaul University, they're looking to close this out immediately. We're going in fast, we're going in hard. People are going down, lights that! Ghosty, making people into ghosts. Jelly, to, do, to put in the work as well. And now it's Zesty, all alone, a 1v4. Needs to get the defuse. And they're sucking tower. They're about to get pinched hard. Zesty has no clue the dangers that are, ooh, they're gonna be, it's just a knife fight. Oh, Zesty! Okay, I understand. You know, wait a minute, Zesty. The Empress might actually work out well for them here. They get another one. It's a 1v1 now. All right, you're just going to put up the wall. Saga's not going to take any chances. There's no way that this is going to be happening. There's no way that Zesty can get this to come back for them. Saga's just playing smart, though. They're getting out of there. They're not, they're not choosing to take the engagement. Is there enough time, though? There might be. Yes, there is. Definitely enough time for Saga to get back around fast enough. They didn't get the half. They didn't get that. Wait, they did get that. They did. Nope. The bomb's done. Bomb's done. That's right. And Saga gets the kill anyway. Gets the kill. DePaul gets the map. And DePaul gets the match. Congratulations to them off after an astounding performance. Coming down to clutch moments. More, more on the wire than I thought it would be. I think Idaho. so too. Once again, I'm, showing that uh, they're, they're, they're almost there. They just need that little bit more to really break through. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And that's what we're going to be hoping to see from this team throughout the rest of the season. But Loki, I think that is going to be it for us for tonight. 
uh, we still do have a lot more Valorant action going over there on official EGF3, I do believe. Make sure you go ahead and drop a follow on this, as we are going to be having more games every Friday for the foreseeable future. So make sure to come and check us out when we go back on there. Uh, Loki, any final thoughts? None come to mind. Uh, thank you to Hippie. Thank you yeah. uh, for producing some amazing games. Uh, go give them a shout out. Go give them a follow. Hippie, where are you on Twitter? Hippie, Hippie underscore prod. Give it a follow. They deserve it. Um, they do deserve it. it. It'll be the same faces here every Friday. So thank you to EGF. Thank you to our amazing teams. Thank you to Sam. And thank you to our viewers. Have a great night, y'all.